This is Plymouth. All change, please. All change. The next train for this car from the road. Kid. Dockyard, the hero. Oh, surprise, surprise. So am I. Your first trip? Yeah. Great, isn't it? Oh, and it just got married, it isn't. Two years in hero isn't my idea of home life. Is it true she's going up the Arctic? Dunno. That's what I've heard. We'll get the buzz soon enough. What's your name, kid? Ordinary Seaman Jones. Ah, uh, a Jonah, eh? <laughs> And in for a whale of a time. Yeah, that's what everyone says. I'll have to try harder. I'm leading Seaman Steel. Tommy, eh? Ah, you're catching up. Oh, there's a fast black. Come on, the ride's on me. Smart, isn't she? Not bad for a grey funnel line. Come on. I've got it in half a dozen stewards with this lot. <laughs> right. OK. Where's the red carpet, then? I'll mention it to the master at arms. He must have forgotten. What's all this, then? It's a banjo, Master. It's the Navy you've joined, not the black and white minstrels. Acting leading Seaman Steel, Master. Your first ship as leading rate. That's right, Master. Good. See leading regulator Fuller about your joining cards. Right, lads. Two to the ship, OK? P office, ship's office, sick bee, Jack Dusty, divisional officer, and back here. Right. After you collected your bedding, report to the leading hand of three uh, E mess. Master. Uh, still, keep your eye on young... Uh, uh, Jones, Master. Uh, Jonah, eh? <laughs> yeah, everybody says that. Mail is now ready for distribution. This looks like it, Jonah. The hair is OK, didn't he, Tommy? Yeah, as far as Jones go. Mind you, they all give you the same old pattern. Hey, it's the poke, isn't it? <laughs> you wait till we're at sea a while, it'll chuck up. Really stink of the general public. Yeah, that's us he's talking about, boys. Cheeky. Yeah, big on the insults. Radcliffe, just my luck. Sorry, didn't realize this was the petty officer's mess, my mistake. Yeah, what do you want about petty officer's mess? Um, There's no POs here, mate. No POs, eh? So what does that make you, Radcliffe? One of the lads? How come? Whatever I am, I can put you in your place, Steel. Leading seaman steel to you. Uh, shave off. They must give them away in cornflakes packets. See that, Jonah? Scrumpy Radcliffe. For six months out in the Far East, he made my life hell. Every mess deck has his pain in the neck out there. It was you. You were just a snotty-nosed kid. 
collecting butterflies. You ain't anything like it. Takes all sorts. <laughs> Who's the critic of the mess? You're speaking to him. Grimless the name. Uh, yeah, but I say what goes. Tension to port. Flag off the pillar. Hold for man! Hold! Revolutions 9-0. Zero. Revolutions 9-0. Zero. Starboard 10. Starboard 10. 10 and starboard wheel on, sir. Revolutions 112. Revolutions 112. Fallout ship's company, sir? Please. Fallout special seat duty. Sir. Our Fluxal quarter deck bridge. Fallout ship's company. Fall out special sea duty man. Revert to NBCD stage three condition X-ray. Folks, old man! How? Turn for a this! Hey! About bloody time. Watch your deck, muscle the flight deck. Jones, get off the guardrail. This isn't a pleasure cruise. Hey, I thought you were looking after the kid. You ought to know better leading seaman. I'll look after him. Yeah, but who'll look after you? Not luck, it's the wandering minstrel. Hey. What a racket. You're uh, wander up the flight deck, Jonah. You're beginning to get through to people. Well, it's freezing up there. Anyway, I'm not doing any harm. Don't you believe it? He's losing. Hey. Look, if you're going to play it, Jonah, play it. But if it's practice and that's what it sounds like, push off somewhere else. Yeah, well, there's nothing in standing orders. I've read them. What do you know about orders? Only in a dog watch. 24. 31. Top channel oil. Hey, Jonah, play us a proper tune. Right, yeah, go on, on kiddo. Oh, all right, yeah. all right. So, how about a bit of George for me then, yeah? Oh, right. I had sweat all that suits me when the people that you were feeding. Well, you really want to know? Yeah. Oh, all right, then. Well, hold it, Andre. I'll put it under your arm. Yeah. This, is, this is what you strum with this hand. Bring it round. Oh, oh sorry, yeah. Jonah. Yeah. Must be heavy-handed. Terrible. I'm sorry, skin. I'm all fingers and thumbs. Get off! <laughs> You're not going to let him get away with that, Keep are you? Please do don't. something. Be thankful I didn't ditch it overboard. Well, I'll pay you back. Pay you back for what? Look what he did. 15-2, 15-4. Yeah, sure I did. He was driving me mad. Not only him. <laughs> Still a bully boy, eh? Why don't you pick on someone your own size? I don't see anyone. Look at me. I'm looking at you. Listen, Simp, he was told he learned the hard way. The way I did. <laughs> you weren't here, Tommy. You didn't have to put up with it. We warned him. Why didn't you do something? Or is that a laundry mark? There's gonna be no peace. Come on, Jonah. Science is golden gold. <laughs> I know 
was a lousy thing to do, Jonah. Yeah, but I wasn't doing him any harm, really. I know that. But mystics can be funny places. They are, it's all a question of temperament. Uh, you know, I used to go with a girl from Gaul. <laughs> She had a brother learning the recorder. Have you ever heard one? Yeah. Yeah, well, that thing used to drive me crazy. Really set my nerves on edge, you know? Gave her up in the end. Now, point taken. I know what I'll do in future. What's yes, that? Well, I'll play it up here. Hey, now, look, this is where I come for peace and quiet. You get it fixed first, then we'll talk about it, OK? Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, it's a nice little grot. Yeah, she writes an old mate of mine. Let's me use it as I like. Is that the wife? It's not the mother-in-law, Jonah. Oh, I fancy her myself. It's, uh, it's a nice hey, view. Be <laughs> What's that on her back? It's a rucksack. We were hiking. Oh, you go in for all that sort of thing, do you? Mm. Would you believe we were on our honeymoon? <laughs> you kidding? No, we were. They did some funny things that you told me. That's something different. Right. We rendezvous with the main task force at midday tomorrow and become the Blue Force of the CNC fleet in the Hermes. We steam north, attempting to avoid the enemy, the White Force, under Admiral Ullman of the Norwegian Navy. Now, this is quite likely to be the toughest exercise we've ever done. And with the Commander-in-Chief's BDI on us, it also better be the best. All right? Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'll leave these service certificates of the new arrivals with you. There's one candidate for officer. Oh, who was that? I was leading Seaman Steele. Yeah, good papers, looks very promising. He's a Navy swimmer. All oh, right. I'll make a point of having a word with him. Where's he working? He's taken over the diving store. He's very competent by all accounts. Oh, well, fine. Don't leave them there too long. A bit of a part of ship, a chance to take charge. Now you took your time. Standees is nearly over. Since when have you been a tea drinker in the afternoon? I'm not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I fancy handed crib. Quick one then. Some of us have to work. I'll leave that to the peasants. I close the paint shop. Stop taking. Yeah, that's what you said last week. <laughs> <laughs> Getting a bit nippy. Hey, look at this. Officer candidate Steele taking time off for a cup of tea. Not afraid the ship will sink without you up there. Yeah. Hey, keep the noise down. Watch keepers are trying to get some sleep. You keep your place as well. Some of these blokes get more sleep than the unknown soldier. I'll be fine. Hands carry on with your work. Oh, blimey, I've only just sat down. Oh, come on, let's clear the mess. Ah, could uh, proper little Hitler. Take it easy, Tommy. I mean, we're a bit late ourselves. A few extra minutes won't make any difference. Stop dripping and be more responsible. Be ordering the skipper about next. Yeah. Right, Radcliffe, turn to and clear up these cups before you go. You what? You heard. Shove off, Steele. I've warned you, Radcliffe, don't push me. Take a day off, don't be an idiot all your life. A.B. Radcliffe, clear up these cups. That is the cook's and job. And turn to. The only place I'll turn to, Steele, is in my bunk. I'm giving you a direct order. Why are you making a big production over a few dirty cups? For Pete's sake, I'll do leave it. Leave it, Richards. Turn to yourself. You leave it, Taff. Steele just wants his pound of flesh. I just want some law and order down here. Now, come on, Radcliffe, be reasonable. Clean it up. I go on, Scrumpy. Don't you start getting brave. Right, I've had enough. Get your hat regulating office now. <laughs> Is this your first time? Like the actress said to the bishop. Hey. A.B. Radcliffe, outside the regulating office now. Didn't they tell you? You need a witness. There are plenty of witnesses. Don't count on it. Hey, let's all cool down. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. So that's your attitude? He doesn't want to waste the jaunty's time. So no one will come forward? You've got this mess sewn up, haven't you, Radcliffe? You can call me scrumpy. I'll be a witness. Cheers, Jonah. Well, 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 if it isn't a little banjo plucker. Here, 
Drink and jeer them work on ours as well. Let them throw the book at me. They will, Radcliffe. They will. It's a serious charge. Yes, Master. Willful disobedience. You wouldn't like to reduce it? What do you mean, Master? Well, it's blown up out of a very trivial incident. On the surface, perhaps. There's more. Radcliffe's bad news. It was an opportunity to put him in his place. You seem to know a lot about him. I do. We served on the Scot a few years back. He'd have been a PO then. That's right, Master. And you were... An AB. I see. I want you to know and understand there'd be no personal vendetta on board. This isn't a personal vendetta. Okay, so long as it's understood. I'm inclined to just give him a good blast and leave it at that. I'd rather you charged him. Why? Well, if he's let off the hook, it'll be regarded as his victory. There'll be no authority on the mess deck. All right, still. But authority isn't necessarily playing it too scrupulously by the book. I know, Master. Okay. Send him in. And what do you make of it, Jock? Uh, could be more trouble than that swath on the mess deck. Oh, it's a bad start altogether. Come in! Regarding this allegation, what do you got to say? Words fail me. That makes a change. There was kid stuff, a few dirty cups, and all my In years... all your years, you ought to have learned some sense. I was provoked. If you're trying to work your ticket, forget it. We'll be glad to give it to you. It's not like that. That's how it seems. There's two sides to everything, Master. Well, you can tell yours to the officer of the day. I'll send for you. Right, Cliff. If I so much as hear a peep out of you, I'll put you in close custody. Understand? Master. So when our acting leading seaman left, Aaron says to me, what's this load of old rubbish, Struppy? And I says, go easy on him, Master. And he's only learning. Learning the hard way, you see. I've met some right Charlies in me, so this one takes the cake. Of course, I couldn't say nothing. Laid it on a bit thick, I am scrumpy. Oh, well, Aaron really lies. said that, Tommy. That's the beer talking. I heard that, me old cocksparrow. I got someone else to tell you. Just as I was about to go, Aaron says to me, just between you and me, like scrumpy, if there's any, you know what I mean, any tit for tat, well, we turn a blind eye and nods as good as a wink, be a lesson for him. I shouldn't have said that. You'd better have eyes in the back of your head, Tommy. You're full of wind and beer, the lot of you. Give me something to write home about, won't it, Tommy? Tell the wife how you took on the ship single-handed. What's her name? Maureen? Don't know. Pauline, that's it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Anyway, she loves hiking. Uh, <laughs> that's how they spend their honeymoon, that right, Jonah? Well, I just said it in passing. Don't be embarrassed about it. We all thought it was a great joke. Where do you think she is tonight, Tommy? I can down the Mecca in Pompey. Widow's off tonight. Yeah. <laughs> you won't get a rise out of me that way, Radcliffe. I'm not trying to, Tommy. It's a fact. Tell us more sea stories. The one about the drunken Matlow who lost his rate. They all know that one. But I'll tell you about the eager beaver who was dead keen on promotion, clean cut. Athletic, recently married, give blood, straight out of a Navy recruiting post. Their only trouble was he was a number one sniveller. What happened to him then, Scrumpy? Oh, that's a very sad story. In oh. fact, it's so sad it brings tears to me eyes. Especially when I think of that poor widow. You're not funny, Radcliffe. You're pathetic. Act like a man. I'll act all right. Come on, Scrumps. Shall I give him a car? No, I'm not in the mood. Calm down, Scrumps. Oh, what? Regulating office again? You asked for You're it. Too late, Krimlis, because old hat now puts your rate on Joel's there. Where are you going, Scrumpy? To find a man's mess to drink in. How long has Radcliffe been in here? About a year, Master? Almost a year, sir. And has there been any previous trouble? Well, he has a reputation. 
Well, haven't we all? I don't hold that against a man. No, sir. I see he was due to get back his leading rate. Didn't he want it? I don't know, sir. He seems to have the authority without it. Until Steele arrived? Yes. And they're known to each other? Yes, and the roles were reversed then. It's a pity we didn't foresee this earlier, sir, but I do recommend a mess change for one of them. Yes, sir. I agree. Series of warnings. Called smuggling. It's rated to AB, lost all good conduct badges. It's quite a career. Nothing about the Scot. But something must have happened while they served together. Find out what? See Radcliffe in the morning. Ah, uh, nine o'clock, sir. Pass him on to you before the rendezvous. Right. Good night, sir. Good night, Derek. Captain, sir, navigating off, sir. Captain. Permission for alteration of course to starboard to two eight six. Carry on, pilot. Aye, aye sir. Attention. As you will most probably have heard by now, leading seaman Steele has gone missing and is intended to carry out a search of the ship. He may in fact have fallen overboard or he may be unconscious in any compartment in the ship. Right, Beaton, paint shop. Ashton, forward flags. Turner, steering gear compartment. Brown, after Mester. Watson, to the forward bar. We looked everywhere, sir. Piped him on all broadcasts. No trace? Only that letter. Well, I've read it, and we can be sure of one thing, it wasn't suicide. That leaves two possibilities, Whatever sir. happened, time is critical. Facts, please, Master. Steele was last seen by mess members at 22.15 last night, sir. Only 11 hours. He failed to show for the forenoon watch, and on checking, his bunk was found to be made up. 
Pilot, yes, get sir. a signal off to CNC fleet. Copy to mod. Regret report must temporarily withdraw from exercise while bear while searching for man overboard. Right, and uh, reverse course. I want to go back to our 2300 position last night and work me out a search area around it. Right, Number one, detail extra lookouts. Have the sea boat check. Make sure Doc Milner knows what's going on. Sir? Sea temperature must be pretty cold, sir. Yes, it's the wrong part of the world for night swimming. Especially 10 or 11 hours of it. Sometime during the night, leading seaman Steele went missing. A search of the ship has yielded nothing, and we must now assume that he is lost overboard. We are starting an air and sea search now, but in the meantime, anyone who has any suggestions about the movements of leading seaman Steele last night should report to the bridge. Any suggestion, any clue, no matter how small, may be vital. Remember, a man's life is at stake. I shall keep you informed of progress throughout the search, that is all. You realize the implication? Only too well. Did Radcliffe say where he was going when he left? Not really. Something about finding another mess to drink in. Right, Grimless, we'll need you later. Things look nasty for Radcliffe, eh? How do you think Steele's feeling right now? I wouldn't have thought he was feeling anything. Not after 11 hours. Typical of steel, probably mess up our run ashore in Tromso. Is that all you can think about? No, first thing that comes to mind was no captain's defaulters with a man overboard. They're hard hearted, beggars, Grumpy. Not really, just face facts. Yes, Grumpy, I think you'd better. Yeah. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, come on. But with last night and all. And all what? Well, you put Tommy over the side. Oh, down. You don't really believe that, do you? You ever heard anything so ridiculous, lads? There's about 15 minutes unaccounted for, sir. There would be. All right, Master, let's have him in. Let's hear his version. All right, sir. Hey, what's in Radcliffe? Good morning, Ratcliffe. Good morning, sir. Yesterday, leading Seaman Steele put you in the rattle for willful disobedience, correct? Yes, sir. But I know nothing about his disappearance. What were your movements last night? Not that much, sir. I had a few beers and then turned in. More than a few? A few, sir. More than your ration? Well, sir, some people don't drink their ration at sea. And you helped them out. You became aggressive. You were hurt to threaten leading Seaman Steele. Sir. Okay, so I was. I felt I had a right to be. He gets up my nose, always has done. You left the mess at approximately 22.15 last night, just after Steele. Where did you go? I went to see an old oppo in the SNS mess. Leading right of Parkin. Sir. Number one. Parkin says you arrived at 22.30. It didn't take you 15 minutes to walk or even 
stagger that distance. Well, I went to the hedge. Anyone see you? Don't remember, sir. Did you see anyone? I don't think so. Check it out, would you, Master? Aye, right, sir. It's not very satisfactory, Radcliffe. I don't see why I'm suspected, sir. Still upset you. If you'd followed him out, seen him writing in the chippy store, there could have been an argument, then a fight, then either accidentally or no, on That's not true! But it bears investigation, Radcliffe. It's what many would think of as a likely explanation. Do you, sir? It is here to be proven, either way. What's it like out there? Uh, Visibility is not all it could be, sir. And the slightest sea makes it damn difficult to spot anything as small as a man. Are you taking a fresh crew on each trip? Yes, sir. And what I need is a fresh pilot. Are you all right? I don't want to start looking for a ditch wasp as well. No, I'm fine, sir. It's just... We overflow a couple of merchant ships. Yes, we've been talking to them. One English, one German. Sixteen hours. Sorry, sir? I said sixteen hours. I know, sir. I want you to extend your area to the west. Okay. How far? Well, three miles westward. Yeah, well, I'd better get going. Good luck, Mike. Steeler needs the luck. We all need it. You stay on the bridge, pilot. Yes, sir. Right. Ask the ship's office to send me back Steen's papers. Sir. And ask the sick bay to send me up his medical records. All right. of Tommy Steele. Yeah, probably halfway back to Gusby now. He couldn't have just fallen overboard. I mean, it can't happen. Any of you heard of it happening? To someone who's sober? An oppo of mine went overboard. He's playing deck hockey. When will we turn back? Secure for flying station. The flying stations may be flat to the game at short notice. Whatever we do, it's a waste of time now. Any of you hear me? Yeah, well, I know someone will be glad we're giving up. And Tommy can't put a finger on him. Yeah, well, go on. Yeah. Off to drink with some men, Scrumpy? I'm happy to go up again, sir. What well, about a rest and something to eat? Perhaps it's time we face the facts. Even if he survived till now, he won't get through the night. No, you can't be sure. There was that case not so long ago, a cadet. Went over the side of a liner, picked up a live and well after 30 hours. But that was in the Pacific, sir, in warm water. Still proves that you can't write a man off just because he falls in the sea. Do you remember that hull trawler? In 1968, I think it was. The Ross Cleveland off Iceland. Arctic waters in February, no chance for anyone. One man survived. 
A young man with a will to live. But given our circumstances... Exactly, so... given these circumstances. Given, not the average man, but leading seaman steel. Mike, you've done survival training. Yes, sir. Well, what are the main criteria by which a man may survive or succumb in this sort of situation? Well, physical condition, for one thing. And steel is one of the fittest men in this ship. Navy swimmer. Field gunner in the 1971 Royal Tournament. Yes? Yes. That means he's tough as well as fit. 19 hours, sir. He's a trained diver. The sea's not a hostile element to him. He's used to it. But not to 19 hours in it. No, but that's where the most important factor comes in. The will to hang on. You should have that. He's young, ambitious. High hopes of doing well in the Navy. Recently married. Well, yes, and, and he must know that we're searching for him. I mean, we've covered the right area. If he is alive, he must have seen the wasp or heard it. It's the night that's going to get him. The loneliness. I think I ought to make several flights during the night, sir. Just to let him know we're there. If he's there. Right, Mike. It'll be a tough decision, no matter when you decide to abandon the search. I can't help feeling that if any man could survive, it would be Steele. Yes, Radcliffe? Could I speak to you, sir? It's important. What is it? Is the search going on? I'm considering abandoning it. Don't, sir. Have you got something to tell me? Yes, sir. I've just come from the boat deck, where I think Steele went over. Go on. There's a cover flapping on the motorboat, sir. It's the sort of thing you don't notice in the daytime, but, well, if I'd been writing in the chippy store, it would have got on me wick. I reckon that might be the cause of it, sir. Steele could have tried to tie it down and lost his footing. Have a look at it, Bob. Aye, right, sir. Come in, Radcliffe. It sounds, uh... Possible explanation. I want to clear my yard arm, sir. And if you think there's still a chance it's of It's a slim it. chance now, Radcliffe, against all the odds. It's been known to happen, sir. During the war. What happened in the Scot? What's at the root of the trouble between you and Steele? Small enough thing, really. Like the cups. But even as an ordinary seaman, he was a stroppy kid, knew all the answers. You were a petty officer, of course. Sir. All come to a head one night in Hong Kong. I was shore patrol PO, and Steele was a member of the patrol. He was called to a bar in one chai. There's a right punch-up going on. He needed help badly, so I left. Someone had to go. But when I got back with reinforcements, it was all over. Steele accused me of chickening out, you know, being a coward and all that. In front of everyone. He was wrong, but the buzz was round the fleet in two days. Petty Officer Radcliffe had no stomach for a fight. I see. Well, Bob, it's quite likely, sir. It would be an irritating noise for anyone trying to concentrate. We'll continue the search until noon tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Well, I tell you, if I was a skipper, I'd lock him up, just like they used to do in the old days. So it's Tommy's wife we're all thinking about. All them cracks about Aiken? Try laughing at it now, Radcliffe. You're through, Radcliffe. You hear me? All washed up. I'll see to it. You want a request form, Scrumpy? Put in for your discharge now. Discharge? It's a joke. They wouldn't waste a paper. Just kick him out on his jack seat. What a way to go after 15 years. Hey, listen, tell me, what happens to washed up men when they're outside? Oh, they just uh, hang about and then they fade away. Oh.
Yes, Derek. Uh, CNC, sir. Approved to continue search until noon. Good luck from us all. Nice of him, considering you must think we're mad. You're going to make a broadcast before pipe down? Yes. I just wish I had something more positive to tell them. Even this slender hope remains, we have a duty to continue the search. The ship will remain at flying stations throughout the night. Call ahead tomorrow morning will be at first light, and I will have all out effort from then until noon. That is all. The sea has no generosity. Sir? Conrad. Ah. The ocean has remained the irreconcilable enemy of ships and men ever since they had the audacity to go afloat together in the face of his frown. The most amazing wonder of the deep is its unfathomable cruelty. Something on the starboard beam, sir. Green eight zero, sir. Starboard fifteen. Starboard fifteen. Got it. It's fifteen of starboard we are, sir. Yes, there is something there. Could be a man. Could be indeed. Revolutions 7 2. Revolution 7 2. 7 2, Revolution 7 3 Peter, sir.
Always said you were bloody wet. 